morning, everyone. Aren't you ready? It's Friday. I know I am. I am so ready to not get up at seven for once. So, um, <clears throat> what are we doing? So, moving graphs around is what we're doing. So, yesterday I went through all of these things. Uh, how do, um, I said if you add a constant to a function, you move it up and down. If you add a constant to the x, you, you, you move it to the left and to the right. If you multiply a function by a constant, you stretch it vertically. If you divide the x by a constant, you stretch it horizontally. If you flip the sign of the y or the x, you will do a reflection across one of the axes, uh, the axis. Um, so this is a lot to remember. Honestly, I tend to confuse these until I do an example. But either way, uh, let's do so. Let's do an example. The example. Well, I wrote it in a poll. What's the example I want? So take take a piece of paper if you don't have one. Um, I'm gonna write it here. Or function. Do we get if we start with x squared plus three? And then we do some things to it. Then we can say one unit, right? I'm going to ask you this question, so start thinking about it. Uh, reflect across the x axis and then stretch horizontally by a factor of two. So that's my question to you. Um, what's the answer? I hope I'm here. Uh, no one has said anything today. So, well, someone replied. I think someone was guessing. That was way too fast. Oh, if you, I wrote these things on the screen to help you, but now I realize. Right, someone told me if if you if the poll is in your screen, did you actually see my the list of things I wrote on the slide? I have a suspicion that you don't. No, but you can move the poll out of the way and see them. Oh.
So nine people, 11 people have replied. There's three right answers. I'm gonna mute you. I think you unmuted yourself accidentally. It was kind of nice. I felt like it was in the classroom. That is unless you fall asleep. Oh, now 30% have it correctly. I guess the longer you take the the more likely is that you're actually trying. So the last answer is the only one that doesn't have any any people voting for it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it here, and we're gonna do it all together. Okay, I guess there was a tie between the first answer and the last and the. Um, wait, oh no, wait, only one, the correct answer is the sixth one. So, um, one person got it right. Oh, I'm not showing results. One person got it right. Well, congratulations. I don't know who you are, so, because it was anonymous, any of you can claim the correct answer for yourselves right now. Wow, it's morning for you too, huh? All right. Hey, which one was the correct answer? I'm about to I'm about to work through it. It was the sixth one. Pretty sure. Um pretty sure it's the sixth one. I'm gonna sub this here. Or, yeah. Well, congratulations, Matthew. Unless you're lying, and in which case, I don't care. <clears throat> so, um, so we start with let's say y equals x plus three. Um so I said translate two up so that's supposed to um if you you look at the previous page uh translating up corresponds to adding a constant so. Just make a random scribble around the, across the page. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add two. Um, all right. So now what do I do? I'm supposed to translate one unit right. Wait, that list of things is in your book. I'm just don't want to show the screen of the book in case the lawyers come up to me. So I said translating right. So that's over here. So I'm supposed to replace every x by x minus one. So that means that the x that is here. I'm supposed to replace by x minus one. Um, and then just basically every time you do anything, you should be writing brackets. Um, so don't forget these brackets because if you forget them, 
um, you you just you get everything wrong. Always. Watch out for brackets. Oh my god. Why would five have a negative in front of it? Well, it doesn't yet, right? We, we're not there. Um, now we're supposed to reflect across the x-axis, and that's gonna give us a negative. If I, to reflect across the x-axis, well, can't go on. I'm supposed to uh, flip the sign of everything. This minus is outside of the function. I know you mean the answer, but I'm getting there. So reflect across x-axis. You're supposed to, what you're supposed to do is put a minus sign outside of the function. So Everything has a minus sign. Oh, I close the program. Everything has a minus sign. So I just copy whatever I had with a minus sign in front. And now I should probably simplify. You should always simplify to if it's going to make your life easier. And what happens? So I have a sum with a minus sign in front. Um, the distributive law says that everything gets just a minus sign. So now the five has a negative in front of it. And finally, I'm supposed to stretch horizontally by two. How do I stretch horizontally by two? I look in this line and I'm supposed to divide x by two. So, um, So that means that every x has to be replaced by um, x over 2. And that's it. Here we are. So I told the steps. I think I think the biggest issue here is that you have to know the difference between putting a minus, for example, putting a minus sign in front of the whole function or replacing every x by a negative x. So so I think that answered why there's a negative in front of the five. Maybe. Is there a question? Are there questions? So you have to multiply the whole thing by the negative, so that's why it's negative five. Exactly, Aaron. Yeah, you uh, to reflect across the x-axis, you're supposed to multiply everything by negative one. So there's a sum of two things. Uh, everything is gonna catch a minus sign. Yeah. Other questions? I find it very suspicious that there's no questions. Like everyone but one person got it wrong. I don't know. The thing that always messes me up is where I like where you put the stuff. Cause sometimes like there's so much stuff to remember that you might like mix some of it up. Right. I mean, you don't have to you don't have to learn everything by memory if you're looking at the book or looking at this list, right? So that's that shouldn't be a problem because you're just you don't have to remember. Um, so I have another question too. What's so that? Does the, does the order that you do it matter? It does. does it yeah, matter? it does matter. Um, let me answer Isaiah's question first. So the thing is, 
here, for example, you see this is inside of the brackets. So that means x get repl gets replaced by x minus c, and then you do everything else. This is outside. This means you do everything else, and then you do minus c. Oh, OK, I got you. That's generous, calling it working it out together. Uh, so the order definitely does matter. Um, let me let me show you real fast. Let's take where's my drawing. Let's take the function y equals x. Very simple function. Uh, so let's first. So let's do two things. Um, I'm gonna do one thing and then go do it in, in a different order. Let's stretch horizontally or um, let's say by three this would mean so this means replace x by x over three so the function becomes x uh, y equals x over three and then let's um translate horizontally So when you do horizontal things, you, you're doing things to the x. When you do vertical things, you're doing things to the y. So to translate horizontally, if I look over here, translating, um, oh, I didn't say by how much, say by one. You're translating to the, to the left, say. You translate to the left, um you're supposed to take um take x and replace it by x plus plus one. So that means if you're doing things to x, that means it goes inside the function. So here I'm supposed to take x and replace it by x plus one. And then just to be safe, I'm going to put brackets here. And then this whole thing gets divided by 3. So, so that's what I get if I do it in one order. Let's see what happens if I do it in the opposite order. So if I start by translating one left, I'm supposed to replace x by x plus 1. Well, the whole function is x. Uh, so just replace that x by x plus 1. And then uh, if you, you know, so the second step, I'm going to do what we did first before. We're going to stretch by 3. So that means that all the x's have to be replaced by x over 3, right? That's what's on, on my list that we figured out yesterday. Stretching horizontally means on the inside of the function, replace x by x over 3. Um, so this x here, I'm going to write brackets again to be careful, has to become an x over 3. And and the one has no x, so it stays, stays the same. And these are different. One function is the function where you add one and divide by three. The other is the function where you divide by three and you add one. If you make x equals zero, on both sides here on the left you get one third on the right you get one do you do it in the order it's written or is there an order to the operations oh that was four minutes ago i don't know what you were referring to 
Laidja. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I just did because I mean, if you look at the algebra, you, you know, doing adding something and dividing something, the order in which you do some in, in which you do those operations does matter. It gives you different answers. But in a picture, you can also see that moving things and stretching them um, also affects things. So if I go to good old uh, drawing place here. So here's my function. And now I'm going to go, um, well, so I'm going to start what I did uh, before was first stretch it horizontally by three. So first you stretch it horizontally. And I mean, it's a line. Uh, you stretch a line, it's going to look like a line. And this is what you get. And then I'm going to translate it, translate this to the um, to the left by one. So the blue line is stretched and then translated. <clears throat> Notice that if you stretch um, in the x direction, the center stays in the center. The um, but then you translate and everything moves. But now if instead First, I translate to the left. Um, let's make this one black. First, I translate to to the oh to the right. Uh, sorry, to to the left. <clears throat> to the left, suppose well plus. So, <clears throat> first I translate, and then I stretch. So then I take x and divided by 3, um, you see I get a different line. So the blue one is um, stretched and then translated. So the blue one I got from stretching and that, that made the blue dotted line. Let's see. So I went from here to here by stretching. And I went from here to here by translating. To get the, the black graph, what I did was first translate. and then stretch. And I got two different answers. So Are what's saying, the, uh, yeah. Sorry. Are you saying the blue dotted line is the translated one or the solid blue line? The, um, so the, um, the, the dotted line is just stretched and then the solid one is the stretch one translated. Okay. All right. So I think that the best way to the best way to learn this stuff is actually to go over here and write a random function. And then say I want to flip it vertically and then and then you go and then you go guess until you flipped it vertically. So I I mean flip it across the um, Let's say, let's say flip it across the y-axis. I'm supposed to replace all the x's by negative x's. Um, so, 
and then well this is, this didn't work um Uh, across the y-axis. So I was trying to replace all the x's. Can also the label. I was trying to replace all the x's by negative x's, um, and I somehow flipped it across the x-axis and not the y-axis. So what did I do wrong? I would say like if you had all that in brackets, you would have put the um, negative sign on the outside, which changed like everything, which flips it across the uh, y axis or x axis from bit. So, um, are you talking about brackets like this? Yeah. So that's what I so. That's what I do to to flip something across the x-axis. Yeah, that's what I'm saying you did wrong. Like you okay. wanted to flip it across the y-axis, but you put it in the wrong spot. So what what was I supposed to do to flip it across the the y-axis? You have to make uh, the x and the inside negative, not the whole thing. Right, so what I did, I was trying to replace all the x's by a negative x. Um, what I did was, I, and if I put brackets around the x's, oh, all of a sudden it works. Um, this is the same as negative, negative. The thing is, and this is also the same, um, something, you might have forgotten, but you surely know at some point of your life is that negative x squared is x squared and negative x squared is not x squared. Um, it's very, if you have a square, it's very important whether the, the negative sign goes inside or outside. So anyway, my, my point was you write a function you say, I want to try to do something to it, and you see if it works in the picture, and that's how you learn, and you try to understand how what you wrote changed the picture, and it's a lot more effective than you watching me write things. Okay, so, um, so this is all, I believe. Um, very useful stuff for graphing functions. <clears throat> Let's see. So, change the signs of all the x's. That's right. So, one second. Where are we? Um, the next, the next topic is um, combining functions. So, uh, I mean, not that much to say here. Um, if I have two functions, f and g, um, I can I can do what I do to numbers. Um, I can add, subtract, multiply, or divide them by um, well, computing f and g and then adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing the results, basically. So, um, I mean, if I have 
say f of x is sine cubed of x, which remember from your trick base, this means you take sine and you cube it. And g of x is um, x to the fourth. Well, that's just great. Okay. I'm just gonna close all the programs, go out, come in. This is 1.4, uh, this is 1.3 still. This is the end of 1.3. This is still new functions from old functions. <clears throat> so, um, how do we, so, if I said f times g, this would be the function that takes f and g and multiplies them, meaning I take a number, I compute its sine cubed, and then I compute its fourth power, and then I multiply them. And that's all there is to it. Um, Let me show you an example. I mean, if you if you practice, you can get good at guessing how functions are gonna combine together. But I, it's not. I it's probably not the most useful skill. I, I don't think it could even work as a party trick. Um, maybe it would if you're very skillful. So here's two functions. Um. So, so what's going to happen if I add them? So, what's going to happen? So, think about this. Actually, does someone want to describe what the sum of these two functions is supposed to look like? So I'm adding one big wave to one smaller, more wavy wave. My prediction is that it would be in the middle of both of them. In the middle? Oh, so... Can you? You plural. I mean, it's going to be chaos if you can, but can you draw here? So you, you're saying it's going to be something here. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, that sounds to me like the average. Um, so what I'm doing, what I'm doing is add, adding them. So for example, at this point here, um, it, I'm supposed to add this height to this height, and that's gonna be the height of the new function, so it's gonna be over here. So if they're both positive, for example, it's going to be above both of them. If one is positive and one is negative, for example, here, this height is positive, this height is negative, so the sum is gonna land somewhere here. This one here, so what I'm doing is sort of drawing one on top of the other. I mean, Depending on, this could be hard or easy depending on which functions you have. Like for example here, probably goes, goes up, but not as much. So, um, this is what it's gonna look like. So, basically kind of take one wave and draw it on top of the other and and the reason like i was saying is that there's a 
how do I find the height of the point here? Well, it's the sum of these two heights. And if you were to do it, this is a bunch of at a bunch of points. So we, the heights here, for example, is the, the difference between these two. The height here is the height of the big wave plus the height of the small wave, which is zero at this point. And if you think about what that means, well, that's the picture you you get. And if you, I don't know, you could get good at doing this. Uh, though, I mean, it's kind of fun, but not super, not the most useless thing, not the most useful thing. Okay, um, moving on, a uh, much more interesting way to combine two functions. <clears throat> but, uh, we can, so for example, with F and G there, we can, another way to combine them is I have, so if I have a number, F gives me another number, it gives me the cube of the sign, and G gives me a, uh, a number for every number, it gives me the fourth power. One thing I can do is do first one and then the other. So, um, you, um, well, that's it. And then the other. This is called um, this is called composing. And I don't know. Do I have do I have full face? No, I don't have full face. I'm just gonna. You can see what I'm writing. I'm just gonna yell. <clears throat> Very stylistic choice. Um, so, what does that mean? So, do you mean I, like plugging in one function into another? Like which one goes first? Yeah. So, what I would call f composed with g. Um, this literally, what, what this means is 2f, then g. Wouldn't it be f of g um, of x? No, uh, that's, I mean, no, I mean, that's just not what it means. Um, it's a bit confusing that it goes um, kind of backwards from what you think, uh, but but it's how everyone talks, so we, we gotta adapt. So F composed with G is, uh, is written like this. We write it with a little circle. And this means, like Autumn was saying, you plug F, into g because in a formula what in what in a formula to do the sign cubed and then to the fourth power um means well how do i write a formula for that i do the sign cubed and then i do the fourth power so So to write it down, what I do is I, I plug up into G. In other words, um, wherever, um, G has, um, and x, I have to go replace it by f of x. Hmm. 
which is, I mean, which is what it always means. When you write g, if you have a function g and you write g of something, what that means is everywhere that g has an x, g only has one x in the formula. I replace that x by whatever I plugged in. And what is f of x? f of x is sine cubed of x. So, that's what it means. It doesn't say it right. You said it. I mean, it sounded right to me. This is kind of a dumb question, but like, why isn't it not just like, why do we, um, like, it's sine, you know, cubed of x. So we have to put the four, like, out of the parentheses. Why isn't it just like only x to the power of four? Why is the whole formula to the power of four? What is it? Repeat the last thing you said. What, what uh, I was just a little confused because, like, I was wondering, like, why is it not just like in the equation, like only x to the power of four? Like this? Um, is this what you mean? Yeah. Right. Because what does it mean to do this computation? Um, this means if I if I plug in a number here, like two. So make x equals two. How do I compute this? Well, the, the order of operations says I'm supposed to, uh, well, well, I plug in two for x, and then the order of operations says, first you do what's in the brackets. So first I do what's in the brackets, in this case means first you do two to the four. So you do two to the fourth first, and that is not what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do first f, then g. Uh, and g is the one that is the fourth power. OK, that makes sense. Thank you. So what is so? what did I write here, anyone, including Pascal? What is this function? Sine cubed of x to the fourth. G of f of two. Right, exactly. Um, G of that? No, oh, the other way around. F of g. What Sam wrote in the in the chat. This is f of g. To get this function, I took f and I plugged in. Um, so f is this, f has an x in there. And then I replace the x that has the expression for f. I replaced it by g. And th this, gave me, this gave me f of g of x, um, which is the same as f composed with, um, sorry, g composed with f of x. Oh, that's what you meant. Good for you. So, um, so one thing we're noticing here is that if you if you compose two functions, the other matters, and um, and it matters pretty dramatically. F composed with G is not sorry. Oh. Uh. I'm saying it wrong all the time. Oof. G composed with F is not the same as F composed with G. Which, I mean, this, this shouldn't be surprising because um, things, you know, doing a thing and then doing another thing, if it's fine, X of course, does that equal 24? If X equals 2. Should put that into a calculator. I don't know what it. It's not going to be twenty-four, um, because I don't know what sine of two to the fourth is. So, composing functions. Um, com uh, com composing functions means you do a thing, and then to the result you do another thing. And doing everywhere in life, it matters in which order you do things. If I open, if I 
turn on the computer and then teach the class gives me a different result compared to teaching the class and then turning on the computer. If I put on my underpants and then my pants, it gives me a different result from putting my pants and then my underpants. So this shouldn't be surprising. Um, the strange, honestly, what's strange is when you see two functions that happen to uh, where the order doesn't matter. Oh, why do you do this to me? Nope, it gets upset at me. I don't know. Um, so, oh my god. Um, so, actually, I, let's do now. Let's do x squared. Let's do two very simple functions. So, what is decompose with f? So, decompose with f means I'm supposed to take the formula for f. So, this is the formula for f. Should be using colors. The formula for f means, well, it's x squared. So wherever I have an x, I'm going to replace it by x plus 3. So that is f composed with g. g composed with f is the other way around. It's supposed to be plug, um, plug f into g. So I take the formula for G, which is X and then a three, and wherever there's an X, I replace it by the expression for F, which is the square. So, um, so this is X plus three squared, and this is X squared plus three. These are not the same, um, for example, if I make x equals zero, zero plus three squared is nine, but zero squared plus three is not nine. Also, incidentally, you know the um, binomial expansion. It's the square of the first and the square of the second and two times the product. So these are definitely not the same. Um, and you can see also in the graphs. Um, they are completely different. So guessing what the composition of two functions looks like in a graph, I find it pretty hard. Um, I mean, you can make some guesses, but it's a lot harder than say adding them. So, so in this example, the two compositions in one order and the other happen to be two parabolas. Uh, but they're, I mean, they're just in different places, but this is, I mean, this is just because the functions involved were, were simple. If I replace G by say cosine, oh, oof, then one composition looks like a wave, um, a wave that is always positive because it's a square. Uh, the other composition looks like, well, is this a wave? I don't know. It's a wave that is getting faster and faster or skinnier and skinnier as time goes by. They, um, composing two functions can, can look completely different. Basically, is what I'm saying. So if there's any questions, I'll, I'll answer. But it's time, right? Yeah, it's time. I should finish here. 
uh, we should go have a week.